honestly, I just really want fathers to come back in the homes. Mm -hmm. I want families to be whole again. Because I think, it, it, I mean, it would just be, we would, it would be a completely different society right now. I see so many kids that just need their dads. You know, my specialty has always been, because I teach the low readers. And like I said, there's, there's um, women are outperforming men right now in, in high school and in college. The college entrance rate for women is 60% versus 40% for men right now with the, this new generation. Wow. And, um, and it's, it's a lack of guidance. Our boys are so lost. And then also the attack on the left on masculinity. You can't say be a man to a young man. They don't even know what a man is. Like, they're just like, it's, 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 it's just been whitewashed and watered down. And we don't even know like what a strong protective man is like a lot of these kids because they never had it in their lives. Yeah. So bringing fathers back, making making families whole again, that is just something that, and I think it would just solve a lot. And I think people ought to be a lot more happier, you know, if they just were content in being married and with their family and. Hi, hey everybody. My name is Kyle and welcome to the channel. This is The Conservative Take. And today we have a guest in this interview. Her name is Kali Eitz. Or you may know her as conservative mixed girl. And this young lady, I tell you, she is so amazing. I just finished talking to her back in the green room, the virtual green room. We had a big, a good time. You're going to love her. And she's just wonderful. So I'm going to bring her on. So, Miss uh, Kali, would you like me to call you that? Would you let me call you conservative mixed girl or what do you like? Just go by Kali. That's fine. That's easy. Kali, yeah. perfect. Yeah. So how, that's, that's awesome. I, mm -hmm. I'm so happy to have you on the show. And thank you for coming on. Happy to be here. Awesome. So let me first explain why I, I pull people on this show is because I look for people who have good personalities, who are conservative, to let them know that we're kind of like in this together. And, and so with, when I saw her on Facebook, I was following her and putting stuff on Instagram and realized that, hold on, I'm following this other person on here. You look the same because you use your meme, right? You use your the Facebook meme, whatever, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the emoji. I'm yeah. like, you look similar, but... So you're the same person. So can you talk to me? Can you talk to me about uh, uh, your 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 platform, your social media platform? Because you have a pretty big following right now. It really, it really just came naturally. Like I did not pursue it at all. Um, I didn't even have Facebook for four years. So I was just like, this is a waste of time. I felt like every time I went on Facebook, I would get depressed. <laughs> so I I literally stopped. And then last year with COVID, I was like, you know what? I'm because I'm a I'm a teacher. I'm a high school teacher and they, they had us all teaching from home and it was just such a crazy time. I was like, you know what? I want to connect with people. So I went back on Facebook and then everything went crazy last year. And I just started posting, just speaking my mind. And pretty soon I, I was getting friend requests every minute, especially during all the George Floyd stuff. And then when I went public, um, I got shadow banned and I don't even know where I'd be right now at right now. I didn't get shadow banned because I, I, like I said, I have screenshots. It was like every minute someone was, someone was promising. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, and then I got really heavily shadow banned and people weren't seeing my stuff, which is, which is what's happening to all conservatives right now. Um, in fact, just yesterday I had a post removed as hate speech when it was literally a, someone from the left saying something mean to me. I screenshot it did it as a post and they removed it from me saying it's hate speech. So the person that's saying the stuff to me doesn't get taken off, but I do for sharing what they did to me. <laughs> but, um, so it's definitely a battle. I, I, it's, it's not easy, especially the main platforms like Facebook, Instagram, but I truly believe like, um, we need a variety of voices. And so, I mean, my, I'm a, I'm a testimony to that. Like I had no idea I was going to start getting a following. I just started posting and people started following me and like, hey, I, we love your voice, you know. So I think a lot of voices are rising up this last year. Absolutely. And uh, I, I really appreciate you. And uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, I'm going to leave all the uh, places you can contact her at. I'm going to put the, I'm gonna put those below. You'll see them on the screen right now. I edit this out. This is yeah. live. And uh, go follow her on Instagram, particularly on Instagram. You will get a kick out of it. And go into the comment section. And then you'll see what true hatred is on the left. And so yeah. I'm going to jump right in there because that's kind of where I want to talk about number one Yeah, is I want to just say two words with you and just tell me your, tell me your, your thoughts about this. White leftists. 
Um, I honestly think white leftists have become the main racists in America right now. It's so sad because it was not like that 20. I was on the left 20 years ago. Like when I turned 18, I'm 38. When I turned 18, I was like gung ho on the left. I remember I got to vote in the first, in my first election. It was for, um, uh, who was it? Um, the, the climate guy, Gore. Yeah. I, yeah, me too. It was Bush Gore. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking Bush stole it. Do you remember that? Do you remember when everyone was like, Bush stole it? Because Florida, there was like this weird recount thing in Florida. And I got a story there, yeah. Yeah. And now we're not even allowed to say anything about that. But, but anyways, um, I was super on the left. And I remember like back then, it just wasn't, this culture was not around of like just dogging on people on the right. It just was not like that. And now it's, it's, it doesn't matter what color you are. They will go, and especially blacks, they will go after you, after you and say some of the most degrading and demeaning things. Just, just a lady today, just, I've had this said to me twice in like the last week. Now I'm not, <laughs> I'm not joking. Are white men paying you? White men are paying you to do these posts. I'm like, that is probably one of the worst things you could say to a black woman. Like, <laughs> I am not being paid by white men to give my opinion. You know, I'm not being, you know, like, that's just, it's, it just makes me feel icky that people could think like that, you know? So, um, yeah, it's, 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 I really think they have it out for us, for us, um, for us black conservatives. I don't know what it is. I mean, sometimes I feel like they go after us more than they go after the real white supremacists. Like, are you guys going on to the actual like KKK accounts and like getting mad at them? Or are you just going after black conservatives? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you, you know what you, you, you bring that up and you're right. That was never really the, the target. But you know what? The reason why, and just I'm just thinking about this right now for the first time, is that the reason why they go after black conservatives, and I just came to this epiphany here, Yeah, is because we're untouchable. Yeah. If we're, if, if we're bold and, and courageous, they can't do anything to us but call us, yeah. you know, Uncle Tom, the Coon, whatever. That's, that's it. They're out. It only emboldens us. It only makes us stronger, actually. It's like, oh. Oh, you we're never going back to your side. You know? Yeah, I mean, and, and so and so and, and I think another thing is, see that we got we're getting paid is it's because they can't in their mind, their shallow mind, they just can't. They need something to cling on to. I, I, it just destroys their whole worldview narrative. Right. Yep. Yep. And I think one of our our the problem is, is that black people that are on the left, they really encourage them. You know, oh, thank you so much. You are such an ally. You know, you, you are, you are fighting for our, you're fighting for our people. You're doing so great. And so they get this like big, like, oh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm for the blacks. I'm for the blacks. I'm saving the blacks, you know? And then they, you know, and it's just, it's just a recipe for disaster. That's all I got to say. Have you seen the family guy meme where it has him? He's like, in his, and he's got like a, a crown on. He's got like a cape and it says, yeah. King of the black people. Yeah. Have you seen that one? Yeah, <laughs> it's like totally. it's oh man, it's 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 at, it's at a level of racism that's even not even. I mean, it's not even really. Um, it's you really can't even define it really because no. it's it's such a deep rooted level of just not only just hatred, but they we feel like we're they feel like they're beneath us or yeah, and, just, if, and if we don't fit in their box, like if we don't follow their rules, then it is. Verbal abuse. I mean, I, I've been called the N-word in my life. I was called the N-word when I was younger, going um, mainly by Mexicans, which is, you know, we don't ever talk about uh, racism amongst minority groups, you know, and that's, that's not, it's only white supremacy. That's it. But there's a lot of racism amongst, you know, different minority groups and stuff. And I actually teach Mexican kids. Like that's the, my main population that I teach. But when I was a kid, that's who, you know, and some of those boys actually had crushes on me and they would call me, you know, <laughs> right. You know kids are, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but this last year, I can't believe how many racial slurs I've been called. I'm just like, this is this is th I thought racial slurs were pretty much like a thing of the past, you know? We weren't we weren't having people just outright calling people racial slurs all the time until this last year. Um, and it's not happening on the right. It's happening on the left. Right. And I, you know what um I'm as your your platform is much larger than mine on Instagram, I've just started developing my Instagram a little bit further, yeah. and I'm seeing a lot of a lot of that right now. Yeah. And uh, but what you what you receive out there is like whoa. Yeah, it's it's all the time, you know. Like um, uh, 
effing Uncle Tom, Coon. I had this young boy, actually. He just sent me the Coon emoji, the raccoon right. emoji. Raccoon, yeah. Yeah. And it was funny because I was like, I was mad. And I was like, you know what? Like, I was going to block him right away. But then I was like, you know what? I looked at his profile. I'm like, he's a kid. He was like 16. And I'm like, I'm going to talk to him. And see, and see if we can make some progress here. And we actually ended up having a really good conversation. But then I kind of messed it up because I shared because I, I shared what he did. <laughs> I guess some people went after him. <laughs> and they were just like, how dare you, you know, because I do have a lot of hate, but I also have a lot of people that really love me. Right. They're like, we cannot touch her. <laughs> like they will go. And so, um, and I also think he was worried because what he did was racist, you know? Like I told you, you, you know, sending someone, I don't think they realize it, but sending someone a raccoon like that is you are you are basically being like the people that were the most racist in our country 100 years ago you know and now you're just doing it like casually just as if it's like it, there's another human being on the other end you know it's right. not like, it's not like i don't ex it's not like i just have someone that checks all my comments and erase everything that's full of hate i don't it's me you know what i'm saying like i am a human being like i am a grown woman i do not deserve to be called racial racial slurs because I'm exposing the the left. You know, I don't even like, I'm not even a big like uh, cheerleader for the right. Like I'm not even like, oh, you guys need to go vote for this guy on the right or you need to follow this right policy. I'm just exposing the left. That's all that, that's pretty much been my, you know, like mission is exposing the left and they hate it, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. And um, that that's kind of where you're gonna make your make your name, I think, because yeah, it, that's 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 the gift that keeps giving. But yeah. and, and, and and the thing is, and I, I get to the point where I don't even want to go on and look sometimes. But then I realize, I say, I understand as a, as a developer, as a program developer, software developer, I understand the algorithm. So even yeah. the trolls, they're helping you, man. Yeah, it's true. And it's like they're actually they're, that engagement that they that they've given you channel, every single comment they do, whatever stupid thing they do, even though it hurts you internally when you see that kind of stuff, it really it really just helps you get grow and, and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's what I'm saying. So now I have a patented response. Now I think I'll show it to you. It says, um, "Thank you for your comments. Uh, I'm, I'm like killing them with kindness, whatever with hearts and, and yeah. all kind of stuff." And I'm saying, you know, your your engagement really helps you know, our channel and our bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I say, and that's at the end. Remember John fourteen six. Yeah. <laughs> You're great. Yeah. I, give, I, I give them a Bible verse; they can really get pissed off. So yeah, um, totally. <laughs> oh, no. but and they attack every yeah. single part of you. And it's not like from one post. From one post, they will attack your race. They will attack your religion. They will attack the way you look. They will. They will attack your educational level. Like they will go for all everything. You know. And the thing is, it doesn't. What bothers me the most is not necessarily like the personal insults. Like I'm a very strong woman. Like I can, I can take a lot, you know, and I also have a really good support system. Like I have a wonderful husband and I have good friends. And so I'm not worried about getting the approval of these leftists. Sure. What, what makes me the most sad is that there's so many people like this, like that. I can't believe we live in a society where there are so many people that are attacking someone who has a different view for them from them in this way. You know, it's not just one person. I wish it was, I mean, I'd block every single one. You know, I, I, if they're coming on my feed and they're starting to say all that crazy stuff, I block them, you know, and imagine if I didn't block them, what, what would, what would have, I'd probably block 300 people at least on Instagram. And it's like, what if I didn't block it? What, what would they be continue to say? You know? Yeah. You kind of have to do that because yeah. you know, if they're being constructive and just say something silly, whatever, that's one thing, but yeah, no. uh, ad hominem attacks, you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, yeah, totally. You can't totally. do that. So, and on, on YouTube, you can't. <laughs> thing about YouTube is you can't um, block someone on YouTube. Yeah. However, you can hide them, and no one sees them, so they can come. They can cuss you out, whatever, and you still get those engagements. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So, cool. so you hide them, and they, and you, they and you say what you do is you keep talking trash to them, and you hide them, yeah. and then they, and they don't. No one's listening to them, but they'll know. Next thing yeah. you know, your monetization is going up because they're being idiots. I didn't know that. That's good to know. That's a good tip. <laughs> yeah. So I do have a YouTube, but I I rarely pro post on it, and I haven't really worked on, worked on that platform. It's I mean, it's a lot to juggle. It is. I mean, I I did not ask. I'm a school like I'm a high school teacher. I don't really have time for social media, but at the same time, this is such important stuff right now that's going on in our country, and especially for Black America, that we need every voice right now. And <laughs> and 
people feel like, oh, no, there's already Candace Owens or there's already, you know, the conservative take. No, no, no. We need every variety of voice right now because you don't know if you're going to be the person to reach that, you know, a someone who has a different style, you know, another big curly headed girl, you know, like you never know what, what you might yeah. have message that person needs to hear, you know, every, every person, every style is different. I, I yeah. interviewed a guy named the black Trumper and he was on parlor. He had like 10,000 yeah. subscribers on, on parlor. Yeah. Very down key, low. Uh, I mean, very, very um, uh, matter of fact, whatever, yeah. but he had a huge following because people liked his frankness and his, yes. his dry humor. Yeah. You know, and so it, it doesn't matter. We need more, the more the merrier. Absolutely. And so um, and you segue me really nicely because I want to talk about a little bit about the black uh, community. And I want to talk to you about the Brexit movement because I'm sort of involved now in a chapter here locally. But my question for you is, what about your walk away moment? I'm curious about that because for, for me, it was 9-11. Uh, for you, what was it? Was it like an aha moment or what, what happened for you to? Yeah, you know what? It was really slow. My walk away story was not like a one time event. It was more like 10 years. <laughs> I was big on the, I um, was big on the left. You know, I came from a Democrat family, um, Democrat uh, city, uh, Santa Cruz, California, which is very, uh, Democrat, you know, Democrat teachers. My grandma was Democrat. My grandpa was Democrat. My black side's Democrat. My white side's Democrat. Everybody's Democrat, right? And all I knew about Republicans and uh, is that they are white guys that uh, like their guns and most likely racist. That's all. That was my thoughts on the right. And I never really even looked into anything. All I all I know is that I came from a poor mom. So my mom was poor. We needed to have food stamps. We needed to have, um, we needed to have, uh, housing authority, you know, housing assistance. I needed help with, you know, she would go to the church to pick. Uh, so I always thought Democrats are the ones that help the poor. Republicans are the ones that don't help the poor. And that's just was my take on that. I never did any research into the history. I didn't, I didn't even know like how some of those programs actually hold people down. I just, that's just what I was. And then Obama came around. And I was super excited for Obama and he, and it's so funny because they love to call Trump the Trump cult, man. There was an Obama cult. Like that was, that was some Obama, Obama, Obama. You, you remember that you remember oh, yeah. that. Oh. People were going nuts for that guy. And, um, and it was just a miracle that he won. We were just all so surprised, which I think actually he was groomed and chosen, but um, that's just, you know, post walk away. <laughs> Obama, Obama came in. And here I was thinking he was going to, because everybody, we had villainized Bush, right? Villainized Bush was like this whole, really stupid president that we had. We didn't like him. This was the left, right? And we didn't like all the stuff he was doing with wars. We didn't like all the stuff he was doing with um, uh, uh, the, uh, the Patriot Act, where he took away a lot of our liberties. I remember even the left and the right were upset about that. You know, we didn't like the Patriot Act. So here I am thinking Obama's going to come in and reverse all this stuff because he campaigned off of hope, right? And I had a very leftist, classical leftist mindset that he was going to come in and do the things that I want as a Democrat, you know? And he did exactly the opposite. Like, I remember he cut food stamps more than any other president of my lifetime. And I was like, why is our Democrat president cutting food stamps? You know, <laughs> like, I feel like that's the one program, like, even though I'm more right now, I feel like food stamps is the one program we need to, you know, we want to keep our poor fed, you know, people that don't, can't, can't afford food. Let's keep them fed. That's what's one thing that's great about America is that our poor actually live like the, like the rich in some of these third world countries, you know? Yep. And he cut food stamps by a ton. And I remember my friend who had, like four kids was like, my food stamps have been cut by 200 bucks a month. This was under Obama. And I was like, why is Obama cutting food stamps? You know, and then he did Common Core. And that was like, why is Obama taking all the rights of states and forcing um, all states to teach the same thing to all the kids? And I didn't like that because I'm a teacher, you know, sure. and I believe the teacher should have autonomy in the classroom. We should be able to decide, you know, we, we are the professionals the state should be kind of like a guidance, but you can't just come in and tell us everything we need to do. And then he also said he was going to take away all the testing from the schools, made that worse, you know? So, mm -hmm. so that was very, I'm like, I was just so, and I, and I was like looking around at my leftist friends being like, why aren't you guys upset about this stuff? This guy, <laughs> and they were still like, he's so great. The, 
the White House is in rainbows, you know? Like, I mean, they were just, <laughs> you know, they were just, <laughs> exactly. I was like, you guys know what he's doing? Like, he's doing all the same stuff Bush did, but worse. You know, and then oh, he passed yes, the yes. Security Act or whatever. I think that's what it was called. The National Security Act, which was Patriot Act times 10. You know, it was like worse than the Patriot Act. And I was just like, dude, this dude's just a fraud. He's just, and, and, and then he was getting rich. He was getting, and now that he's left the, the White House, he is like, his wealth has increased by like 30 fold, right? He's living in a big mansion. He's got like several big mansions. He's like a celebrity now, you know? And he didn't do anything for our country. He didn't do anything for black America. And so I left the left right before his second term. I was like, you know what? I'm done with politics. These people are just, they're just frauds. That's why. And I was, was, wasn't into the right either. I was just like, I don't really have a home. So I just stopped voting for like three years. Yeah. Yeah. And then Trump. <laughs> then Trump came. <laughs> you know what? You know, you know, I was, you know, I had a lot of memories suppressed during that time. And she brought it all up. Yeah. And um, I may have to go back to therapy. For, I never, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I was the chairman of my local chapter for the young Republicans during that time period. And uh, it was just all that stuff you just brought up those old memories. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, is that for me personally, I got so disenfranchised with the Republican Party. Yeah. That I was I was done. Yeah. I was done. And it wasn't until Trump came around that I was back. I was back in the fold. Yeah. And um, so, gosh, man, Obama. Yes. Um. <laughs> that wasn't even as like back then I was they did not. The news protected him for one. So now that we now in hindsight, when, I, when I've looked back, there are things he did like he was droner in chief. He was droning people and killing civilians yeah. like also his his border policies were worse than Trump's. He was deporting more people than Trump. Like he had I mean, there was just. All the stuff he was doing, and we didn't even know it because the media was just, you know, fangirling and fanboying over him the whole time. And we had no idea what was going on. But luckily, I was paying attention enough to say, man, all this hope stuff he was doing is just the country's the same. And we also had a recession, you know? Right. And I'll never forget him bailing out the banks at the very beginning, too. I was like, what's that about? You know, like, uh, it was just, I don't know why people still even think that the Democrats are anything but establishment. Like they're just all the same team to me. And that's why Trump was such a, you know, he was, a, he was already a billionaire. He couldn't be bought. And that was, that was the thing with Trump, you know? Yeah. For me, for Trump, it was really about the fact that I knew him prior to, yeah. we all, we all liked him. We all liked the apprentice and we all liked the fact that uh, he spoke his mind. And, you know, when he first signed up, I was like, well, yes, not, it's probably not going to go well, but it will at least it'll be exciting. It'll be entertaining. But then the more I heard him talk and the more he was like going anti-establishment, I was like, you know, that's what we were, that's what we were getting upset with about the Republican Party coming up as, you know, as a black conservative in my local county. And I was like, you know, we, the, the ideas that he was saying was what we're talking about, but no one wants to talk about this globalism stuff and all yeah. this other stuff. And it's like, why can't we just talk about America? Why can't we just talk about his American policy, jobs and factories his and NAFTA? His policies and, you know, were very pro-America. And I think that's what, I mean, I didn't even like the guy at first. I l voted for him simply to spite Hillary. And I wasn't even going to vote. I remember I wasn't even going to vote. And then I was like, you know what? I think Hillary's going to win. And I can't stand, I mean, Hillary, what she did in Haiti. And when you look into the Clinton Foundation and the Clintons and just the Clintons in general, they just have so many nasty butt stains. <laughs> like they are, they have just so just issues like I don't know how that family has not been canceled yet the Clinton family like I, I don't know why the left protects them but I just I voted for Trump out of spite and I remember telling my husband like I don't really I don't really think I mean I think he's you know cool and everything but I don't think he should be president you know I didn't I wasn't really that big of a fan of him actually and that was remember I was coming out of not voting for three years right. and I just I just did it because I didn't want I just wanted one less vote for Hillary like and then when he won it was like okay here he is winning. Let me see what he's going to do. And then he started doing stuff like right away, his, his fight for human trafficking, which never got any press. That, no. was, that was right away. One of his very first executive orders was to really clamp down on human trafficking. And I was like, wow, like we have not had a president that really did that. And, 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 um, and just what he just, he started doing it, just everything he started doing was just tightening up our country and making it stronger. 
And, and then, and then also seeing all the hate from the left, like that also made me like him more. I was like, here he is doing all this great stuff for our country. And he, they're just flipping out the whole time. Like just, ah, he's a Nazi. He's, you know, yeah. Hitler and he's going to put us all in camps and he hates black people and he's a racist. And I was like, wait a second. Like, how does a racist release pe- black men from prison? Like that is, you would think a racist would want to keep black men in prison. It was 94% black men that got released under his, um, under that uh, act that was called, what was, what's the Freedom Act, right? Or the Freedom? Correct. Yeah, it was, it was, um, I don't remember the actual exact title of it. Yeah. But it was 94% black men that got released under that. Racist. Second chance, second chance, like a second chance yeah. I believe. Yeah, something like, yeah. Racists don't release black men from prison. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and you work with some, you know, you work with Van Jones on that. I mean, yeah. Uh, and so it was a bipartisan type effort. That, Absolutely. Uh, he didn't have to do. No. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, I think, think about uh, Trump. I don't want to talk about Trump all the time. But, yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh, but but I, I, even though I could, but this yeah. is your show. This is this is your program. <laughs> but I think what, with, with him, I think about him is that he, he wants to, uh, his legacy is important to him. And he wants to, you know, be a man of his word and at least try and do what he says he's going to do. And so yeah. that's one of the things I appreciate about him. And um, but in terms of other people that you admire, are there any other black, white, doesn't matter, conservatives out there uh, or people in the social media space that you respect and follow that you really um, want to talk about? Or um, um, yeah, I mean, I seeing Candace Owens rise up as a voice has been because I've been following wa- watching her for a while. Um, I left the left before she did, so it's really funny when people are like, "You're just a Candace Owens wannabe," and I'm like, "Dude, she was in high school." When I left the left, <laughs> like, you know, she's <laughs> right. Um, yeah, she's a kid. Yeah, she's, I mean, she's, she's, I mean, she's awesome and everything, but it's like, you, we're not all the same. And I hate how the left does that. They just lump us all into one group and just like, you know, you're, you're, can, you're just a Candace Owens wannabe. You're a Candace Owens grifter. I'm like, dude, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of us and we're variety. You know, we don't all think the same. You know, it's very rude of you. It's, it's um, dehumanizing us, actually. Right, dehumanizing to lump us like that, but um, when she, what I love about her is that she does not care what people think. She is not trying to make sure to please this group or that group, or you know, um, she will go against Republican establishment. She'll go against the Democrats and the left. She will. She will just speak what is what her thoughts are, and that's America. You know, we should be able to be do that. And, and and that's just something that has really inspired me to just be like, hey, I'm I disagreed with Candace on the Juneteenth thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I know she came out as some as a, as against making Juneteenth a holiday. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I disagree. But that's what's great about America is that we can disagree. You know, I don't have to. Oh, I'm going to agree with everything Candace Owen says. You know what I'm saying? Like, or sure. You know, and I think that's that's what's so great about having multiple voices, and we really need to have multiple voices amongst you know black conservatives and on that on this on that side. But yeah, I love Candace. I love the work she does with Blexit. Um, I'm also I love like the snarky YouTubers, like the ones that are always like <laughs> you know bagging on the left. <laughs> um, Mark Dice, like <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, he's great. <laughs> That guy's, but you know what? He's his own thing. You know, he does. He his, and then, but um, my very, very favorite person on the right was Rush Limbaugh and re- rest in peace. I really think that it's funny because when I was on the left, I thought Rush Limbaugh was like this horrible racist guy. Right. And then you start listening to his show and you're like, oh, never mind. He's right. <laughs> like he just has a lot of, he was just a great voice for America. and. Um, I it's, miss him. Yeah, it's crazy how I, I would. Ne- I, if you had met me 15 years ago and you had, and I had, and I would have said I would have listened regularly to Rush Limbaugh, I would have been I would have laughed in your face. I would have been like, no yeah. way. But um, yeah. I was yeah, I'd be a subscriber for like three or four years. Um, yeah, every day I couldn't wait for the show to come on. So yeah, so uh, you know, you know, you know who I like the most right now are are liberals who are getting it, like your 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 Rubens, your Dave Rubens, and yeah. your Tim, and your Tim Pools, man. Yeah. He's, a le- he's a leftist, but he's like, dude, man, this is, I mean, he's, he's coming slowly. Yeah. He'll I, probably never get there, but. And that's okay. And that's yeah. the whole thing is like, it's not about recruiting people to the right. And that's where it's like, people on Instagram just have me so wrong because I'm like, 
where where are my posts where I'm trying to recruit people to the right? Like where are my where are all my like raw raw right posts? No, it's just exposing the left. I think it's a deception. Like they they give these solutions. They always do this talk where it's like we're going to come in and I mean, the whole campaign of Biden and Harris was like Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, right? And then when it came down to it, what have they done for black people the last 4 months since they've been in office? What have they done? Oh, nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like absolutely nothing like zero they quickly passed that anti-asian hate act so obviously they can pass something quickly but what what have they done for black america they haven't done anything and it's like and people are still acting like they're so great like they're going to come and and save black america when really it's it's more of a matter of saving our families and that's that's not something a government can do you know yeah, there's, there's a deep rooted psychology going on, and particularly in the black community. I did a video a couple of days ago on that, and I want to get into that here, but yeah. it's, 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 we're being gaslit because we know they want people to think a certain way, and then they know that the people who are going to buy into it aren't going to second guess it. No. And so, and so um, because if they second guess it, then they have to internalize their worldview and their own position, and that's too hard yeah. for them to do. You know how it was hard for you to come over from the left to just the conservative moment. How how difficult it is for people in that same space right now? You know. Yeah. I remember when I signed up for the George W. Bush website right after 9/11. <laughs> I literally looked over my shoulder before I pushed the button to enter <laughs> into my information for for a media group. I was yeah. terrified. Yeah. And, and your story is exactly the same as mine. Well, you, know? you you lose. I've lost family, and that's been the hardest part of it all. Yeah, me too. Because I've lost family. They 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 just think I've gone crazy. And I'm just like, what's so crazy about just wanting a normal America? You know, I don't I don't see my views as being radical. I just see them as like what we all wanted in the nineties, you know? Even the people on the left. They right. are the ones that have become radical because of the media. The media has pushed the narrative of black men are being hunted by the police, which is so far from the truth. I mean, I wish they would show how many times a police officer let a black man go or how many times the police officer saved a black man's life, which I'm sure happens 10 times as many times as, you know, a black man gets shot by the police, you know, like I'm sure, but we don't see those stories, you know, no. and, and, and all they do is they just get manipulated by the media and they just, they're just fed these narratives and you'll see, you can see, I always look at CNN cause that's who my mom loves. I always look at CNN and they're just on, like they get on their little tips. They're like, Oh, we're on, we're going to be on our uh, mass shooting tip right now. So for the next week, you're going to hear about every mass shooting that happens, even if it's like two people. It's still not considered a mass shooting, but you'll hear about everything. And so people get all like freaked out about mass shootings, right? But then it's like, okay, now we want to go into the COVID stuff and you're going to hear all the headlines about COVID and it's going to be just this carefully chosen all the COVID deaths, right? Like what happened to all the headlines about COVID deaths? Those aren't, we don't see those anymore. But no. this time last year, it was every single day there was a headline about a COVID death, you know? And it's just like, they just choose what we're supposed to care about the media. And I'm just so sick of that. I'm so sick of it. And once you see it, it's really easy to see, but I just wish more people would see that the media is manipulating them. I was on a phone call last night with someone who was telling them essentially that that's my biggest concern is, is the media because yeah. I can deal with all the other stuff. I can deal with all the Democrat stuff. I can deal with all of the gaslighting, all of the big tech stuff. But the media prevents us from uh, telling the real story. That's the problem because now, now you truly have tyranny. Yeah, absolutely. You know I mean, because and that, that's they're, they're our last check and balance. Mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then you have conservative people, and when they're um, shut down, that's doubly worse. Yeah. And so it, you, I'm sorry, but if you, give, right. you can give me 99%, 99% of, of uh, liberal media, give me 1% hard-hitting truth, who unfiltered uh, media, I would take that than what we have now. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And the other thing that's, it's, uh, they're not letting people, I'm a high school teacher, I teach public high school. And they're only letting one worldview in the high schools right now. If you share any other, like you're allowed to have black lives matter, but you say back the blue or all lives matter in a high school, you can get fired. You know, wow. I, there's teachers right now that have Biden, uh, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders stickers on their laptops. They just go to meetings in Biden Harris shirts. They'll, they'll teach their class in Biden Harris shirts. 
Um, but you go to you go to a meeting with a Trump hat? No, you. That's not going to happen. Like in California, because I I taught teach in California, right? And um, you're not. You're just. It's just one. The kids and what they've done is the left is very clever, and we need to we need to kind of take some of their strategies because we're being pretty stupid not taking some of their strategies. What they've done is they've moralized their positions. Yes. So when when you say when you say I'm not going to share my pronouns, that is not a political statement. That's a moral statement. That means that you aren't tolerant of trans people and you hate trans people if you're not sharing your, your pronouns, right? Right. When it's far from the truth because they've, they've turned like a, a very small issue for a very small percentage of the population and turn it into this big, huge thing. And if you don't go after it, then you are a bad person. Right. And instead of saying it, it's absolutely political, actually, and, and, it, and it's unnecessary, but um, that's what they've done in our schools. And so now all these kids are just getting these messages that are just pure, you know, like for abortion, for example. You cannot share a pro-life message in schools. You can only share pro-choice messages in schools, in public schools, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. And we, we really have to come up with some better strategies because we're not winning the war right now. Even no. though more people are waking up, we're not winning the war because the war is on our children. It is. And in yeah. fact, and one of the reasons why this channel is where I'm doing what I'm doing is because of what Candace Owen said, we need to engage the culture. Yeah, and so that's why my my, my tagline is pop, pop culture and politics filtered right, and uh, it's filtering it through your worldview. And we yeah, and so that's sort of how we kind of revolve because I, I agree with you that we need to get in the fight. And the big charge now in my little area is to get involved in the school board. Yeah, and uh, that that's really where the the front line is. That's where your Marine Corps going into you know, storming the beaches is is on that school board. So if we can get our foothold in there, maybe we can make some progress. It's pretty unfortunate, though, because the Republicans are really hard to work with. In fact, we have contacted because we just moved from California to Florida and we've contacted running for the school board out here. And they were like, oh, you're not locals, so we won't back you like they want candidates that are from the area. So I think that's the other problem with the right is that we do have kind of a battle with the left and the battle with our own. We do. Party. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I was going against what I was alluding to before. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, when, with the, um, the, the Republicans, the issue with them is uh, typically you have the ideologues. And here's yeah. the problem I had the whole thing is that they would say the ideologues. And I, would, I would say, look, okay, when you got to have strong conservatives, okay, we have a, a, a midterm where we would sweep out the House and the Senate, and then they would go in there and not do anything. That yeah. happened for like three or four election cycles in a row. And I, got, I was frustrated. And by the 2010, that midterm, that was when it was over. That was when yeah. I think Obama finally, that was the last good thing we had. After that, we, we were done after that. We yeah. were done. And, uh, and in 2012, of course, we knew what happened then. Um, Obama got elected. And then from there, it was just downhill from there. And I was, I was, I was done. I was like, you know what? Screw you people. I'm out of here. I'm, I, <laughs> so, and I yeah. was just disenfranchised, totally 100%, yeah. because I was involved in so many different levels of the Republican Party at so many different levels, the national level, local level, all kinds of things. And I saw just about everything. You could see and the pushback. And I said, look, dude, you're getting mad at Trump, but he, you know, these people that you put in before, this these Tea Party, a lot of them were good, but a lot of them sucked. They didn't do what yeah. they were supposed to do. And now you wonder why Trump's right here. It's because you guys didn't do your freaking job yeah. the past four, six years. Yeah. And so I, I and I lost that right there. I lost a lot of friends. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. in the Republican Party. Yeah. You know, there's the ideologues, they, they tend to be stuck in their ways. Yep. And uh, it, it's just, it's, and then again, we're fighting against the left who are way more creative. They yep. can have a dog out fight and still come together kumbaya at the end. Yep. Absolutely. And they do, they do put a unite, they do push a united front. You know, like they, they seem to all agree on the same issues, even if behind the scenes they don't. Right. And that's just something we, lack in and I think a lot of it has to do with we just don't have clear direction and I think what you're saying with going with the school boards and taking back our that back our schools where Blexit's super involved in school choice and making sure we have school choice so that we can get these I, my first teaching job was in Compton Compton California mm -hmm. I've been there yeah <laughs> and um yeah the watchtower around there if you are if you come from a poor family and you live in Compton you have a choice of one school. That's it. You have a choice of one place to put your child for 12 years. Wow. 
You know, one like, school. That's a very populated area, though. Well, no, no, no. I mean, your school in your district, like, oh, you okay. Because right, with sure. school choice, you can't really sure. go out. So you have that. Your this is your school. Your kids going to, and you can't do anything about it because you don't have the money to send them to private school. You don't live in an area that has a nice school. So where you're sending your kid for six hours, seven hours a day, is going to most likely mess them up. <laughs> and that's why school choice is so important. And that's why I think it really is something that we can actually market to the left as well. Like if you actually care about black kids, you care about black people, why are you against school choice? You know, it's a very bipartisan issue, actually. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's 60, 40, actually. Nice. Yeah. So, so that's something that I've always uh, like I love about Blex that they're really pushing for that. I love that about Florida. That's just where I live now. They have school choice here. In fact, I just got a job at a private Christian school now, but wow. there's a lot of variety at the school because of school choice. You wow, know, it's, awesome. it's a pretty expensive school. It's a Christian Montessori school, which are much oh, yeah. more expensive. And um, but there's kids there that would never be able to afford it if they didn't have the school choice vouchers that that Florida does. So if there's anything that I want to tell people that follow you or that are watching this right now, like really advocate for school choice in your state, you know, because it's, it's awesome. <laughs> I, I had gotten heavily involved in that. Uh, a, a friend of mine who was a Democrat locally had me get involved and I was really surprised and I went to a seminar and it's not cookie cutter for every single state, which is beautiful. Some have vouchers, some don't, some have, you know, all kinds of different options, but it's tailor made to whatever community wants to do, yeah. and it's it's overwhelmingly popular across the country. Yeah, and at least it was at one point. I know, and it's it's a lot of Democrats are all about it, all about it too, because you don't mess with people's kids, okay? Yeah, that's that's where the rubber meets the road for most people, right? It's the safety and protection of their kids, and that's where we all have a common area there. And so, yeah, you're right. It's it's like if you tell a kid that he can only go one place, that is the most racist thing you can tell someone. And yet yeah. you want to talk about, you know, systemic racism. Let's talk about school choice. Yeah. Absolutely. Can we, can we, can we, can we grab arms, lock arms, and we can we talk about stopping systemic racism through school choice? How about absolutely. that? How about breaking up some of these school boards and these teachers unions? Yeah. You know? Yeah. How about that? Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because it's like, they do say they, they're constantly, constantly talking about systemic racism now, but I'm like, who's the system? It's you guys. Like, who controls the universities? Who controls the public education right now? It's you guys. You know, like, that's the Democrats. They really have a stronghold on the teachers' unions. They have a stronghold on all the public colleges and universities right now. 80% of the professors are, are on the left, you know? So yeah. it's like, when you guys are talking about systemic racism, racism you guys need to look at your own Look at your own selves, because it really is. Uh, if you go back to the down to the root of the issue, a lot of it has come from the left. You know, I can't even. Can we think? Can you think of a systemically racist policy that's on the right right now? No, I've been trying, <laughs> but I can think of like four that are on the left. <laughs> like, you know, like so. It's it's it's. Uh, I don't know. They're just. It's the yeah. media, really. You know, yeah. If you really want to go back to, it, you can really go back to FDR with his New Deal. And yeah. then the, that's the migration pretty much happened where black people, uh, it was a fortunate deal where they basically chose to get in bed with the party of the Klan so they could feed their families. That was, yeah. that, was the, that, that sucked. Then you had the redlining policies out of the, out of the New Deal, which we know about that. And then, of course, that led into uh, FDR, I'm sorry, LBJ with his uh, 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 Great Society. Yeah. Right. And then you had in the 94 crime bill mm -hmm. and all that pile upon, pile upon, pile upon, pile upon. And now here we are four generations removed or, or more. And now we have fatherlessness and all these things are uh, systemic in our country. And yes, it's there. And yes, I would say it's racist, but it's the Democrat party that initiated a lot of it. Now exactly. I will put, I will put blame on, I'll put blame on the Republican party for not having enough gumption yes. other than maybe, other than maybe a Jack Kemp who tried, Yes, but, but he can't do it by himself. He's dead. So outside of him and maybe Trump, well, yeah. not maybe Trump, that's yeah. not enough. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's a crime of commission being the Democrats and a crime of omission being the Republicans. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We let it happen. We really did. And I think a lot of us were just asleep. I, I'll never forget, like you, you mentioned 9-11. That was also when celebrity like obsession became really, really huge. Like Paris Hilton and like people were just 
and that's also when the iPhone came out. You know, it's been 15 years since the iPhone. It's also when um, social media and MySpace and Facebook and and so everybody just started getting into their own little worlds. Yeah, and, right. and and they were just destroying us around us while we're on our phones, right? It's <laughs> a very good point. Yeah. Good point. So it, 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 it's a distraction. A lot of it's a distraction, but the same thing, like you mentioned systemic racism. That's the other thing is that the culture of what of um, just, you know, like rap culture and like Cardi B and all that stuff. That's also a leftist thing. Show me a conservative rapper right now that's that's acting like Cardi B. You know, show me show me a conservative that is you know <laughs> that's doing that's uh, glorifying gang violence. <laughs> no, you are dropping it. You are dropping it. Whoa, you are crushing it. You are killing. It. I mean, it's just I mean, it's just logical stuff, you know. And then and then we act like, oh, why are these? You know, why are why are uh, young black men doing so many cr so much crime. Well, I've seen it. I have seen because I'm a high school teacher again. Sure. I did for ten years. I helped take. Um, I I worked with a grant program where we would take minority kids, mainly black kids, on college tours because a lot of times these kids don't know about college and they have no. They think college is like high school, mm -hmm. and so they're like, I don't want to go to college. It's going to be lame, like high school, because high school is pretty lame. I always tell that to my students. Like, you have to be there from eight in the morning till three in the afternoon. You have five different teachers. Some of them are grumpy. You you have to you know stand in lines. You can't eat in class. Blah blah, blah all this stuff. You know, it's pretty it's pretty restrictive. But college is not like that. No, like it's very like it's it's completely different. So I used to take them on college tours and be like, hey, look, this is so different than high school, right? You see that, and, and little light bulbs would go off, and them like, mm -hmm. oh, I, maybe I this is where I want to be. But anyways, right. I would see these kids come in as freshmen because I worked with them for four years. And I would see them come in as freshmen and they're like innocent and cute and like, you know, just bright eyed. And then I see them starting to get into that whole like toxic music, right? Yeah. That toxic, I mean, that music is toxic. The the real hardcore gangster rap, all this like crazy stuff that they're listening to nowadays. And I saw it just destroy their innocence. And by the end of the fourth, by the fourth year, I'm like, who is this kid? You know, like he's just drinking alcohol. He's messing with a bunch of girls. He's failing all his classes and blah, blah, blah. Good parents, you know, like, but that music just, and that they're putting this in their ears all day long, right? And they're listening to these messages all day long. And then we act like that isn't affecting our kids because the left denies it. They're like, that's not, a, that's not, you know, it's just art. No, it's not. You th those kids care more about what those rappers say than what their teachers say. You know, that was, that was art is X Clan, uh, rest of development, uh, yeah, I'll call Quest. Oh, you know? totally, totally. You know, that was art, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to be, I'm not trying to be an old head who doesn't yeah. understand the culture. I, I look, we, we, we had our share of people who were doing gangster stuff too. We had NWA, yeah. we had you know, we had uh, you know, a bunch of other rappers, but it was more intelligent. I mean, you know, the rap nowadays, it's like it's pretty bad, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's uh, it's auto tune, and it's yeah. like, you know. Right. So, yeah. And they really, they really do want to dumb down our kids. I mean, there, I, I do not doubt there is a deliberate agenda to dumb down our kids. And that's the other thing. The left wants to like cancel math. They want to lower, there was a policy in San Diego where they, they wanted to stop giving homework because they noticed that the black kids weren't doing their homework as much as the white kids and the Asian kids. So let's just stop giving homework in general because you guys are targeting black kids and it's racist to give homework. So they just got rid of homework. I'm like, that is not the solution. You do not. The, first of all, these kids are totally capable of doing homework. My whole life, I have been teaching minority children. My whole adult life. And I, what? yeah, those <laughs> kids can do homework. Like, and, and I always tell my students, like, I give them very easy homework. But I'm like, I'm, I'm giving this to you because I want you to do it on your own. Like I give you very easy homework and I want you to learn how to not always have an adult tell you to do stuff. Because I never had a parent to tell me to do stuff. So I'm giving you, I'm giving you this easy homework assignment. You're just going to get it done every day. It's going to take you 20 minutes. You can do it. And guess what? They did it. Right. But instead the left's like, oh, homework's racist. Let's just get rid of it. Right. And then what we have is white parents and Asian parents giving them extra lessons, giving them, you know, having them do these after school stuff. And the, the black kids are just sitting there doing nothing, getting in trouble. And it's making things even worse. It's, a, it's so it's just there, there. There's an example of systemic racism on the left. 
Yeah, I, you know, in the nineties when we had a different world, you know, the, the Cosby Show. I'm not trying to be funny. Um, yeah. I'm not trying to be funny at all. Not, I'm, it was a, it was a positive show. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had they had the show um, Rock uh, with the, the, the guy with his who's son. Oh, yeah. Remember that? And uh, it was like a, 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 people wore the, the X stuff on their on the shirts, and they wore yeah. like you know African little medallions and stuff. It was a conscious age. It wasn't perfect. No, but there was there was stuff out there that was edifying at least. And you could choose if you wanted to listen to a little bit of uh, NWA, whatever you could, but you could always come back if you listen to some rest, rest of development or something more yeah. edifying, whatever, or even gospel was, was really big back then, you know, yeah. uh, on the radio. So it was like, you could have all that, but now it almost seems like it's just it's zero in to just one style of music, which is just denigrating yeah. uh, to a level that's even, that even, <laughs> um, but that other things would be uh, ashamed of. So yeah, I just don't, uh, I don't understand the, uh, why people can't see that. And I think part of it is because we have we don't have a, a black father, um, stable black fathers in our society as much, where they're in the in the home. You know, we would have like a good times. You have like uh, James right there. You know, you have yeah. you know you have uh, Fred Sanford. Well, he was a good friend, our father, but he loved the son. He was there. Uh, I just there were just role models coming up, not just necessarily on TV, but also in our neighborhoods. Uh, but now you can't find those. Uh, role yeah, models. I mean, I can't even think of a single black dad role model on TV right now. But when I could go back in the nineties, when it was family matters and fresh there you go, yeah. there and all of that. I mean, there was just like, it was, it was just this. And you know, what's great though. Uh, I'm going to mention this again. I'm a high school teacher. My students are so nostalgic for the nineties. They like my boys. Some of their favorite shows is full house. I'm like, full house is your favorite show. Like they want it so bad. They just want normal. And I think this new generation, cause millennials, they're crazy. That's I'm I'm like the very end of a millennial. I'm at 82, which is considered like eight is the first year of the millennial, 82, 1982 is when I was born. This new generation, Gen Z, mm-hmm. they are actually so different than millennials. Millennials are the super leftists, they're the ones freaking out right now, right? Mm-hmm. Gen Z, they just want normal. They've been yep. through so much trauma. They just want they they just want like full house. They're sick of being on their phones. They want answers to stuff. They're very depressed. Mm -hmm. You know, we've made, we we're raising a generation of depressed children, you know, and, and, and they just want some hope. They want, you know, because everything is just so everyone's racist. Everyone, this is horrible. They hate cancel culture. They're like, why are you canceling my favorite show? Like, you know, so there is hope. There's definitely hope. But the problem is the left has a stronghold on the messaging so if we don't catch these kids before they turn 25 or whatever and their minds all developed yeah. then and give them at least another side, we might lose them forever, you know? Yeah, my daughter and I had about a four hour conversation one time and we went through all kinds, she's right now, she's uh, 16 and uh, we just talked about everything. I mean, we talked about the Bible, talked about questions like this, heavy questions like, you know, can God create a, a rock so big he can't lift it? And we talked about politics, talked about, all these different issues, and I just like give her. I basically just emptied my brain, and she challenged me with these questions. Like, and so she's a Gen uh, Zer, and yeah, she would tell me coming up in school, she was like, "Daddy, cancel culture is so stupid," and they would just yeah. they, they would they would mock millennials. They were like, "This, they're they're just stupid. We don't we don't believe that stuff." But yeah. like she said, "They will get the messaging." Like you said, by the time they get a certain age, they'll figure it out, and they'll bring them back in the back door if they have to. Yeah. You know? So uh, you're right. We need to. Uh, and they've also imagine. turned into a moral issue. And so these kids, they want to be good people. And so if it's a moral issue to be on the left, like if you are, if you are a racist, if you're on the right, right? So that's the message is if you're on the right, you're a racist, right? That's how these young kids are being told right now that Donald Trump was a racist and that people on the right are white supremacists. And what happened on January 6th was white supremacists, right? And so now they, the, these kids, they want to be good people, but they don't want to be called a racist. Right. They don't want, you know, to be called a transphobe or a homophobe because, you know, maybe they don't agree that, you know, kids should be able to take hormones at 12 years old, you know? So it's, it's, it's hard. We've got to, we've got to, <laughs> we've got a mission. We definitely have a mission ahead of us. I, I want to say this because this is what, this is where we could be eventually if we don't, if we're not careful. And I'm a big Star Wars guy. And, oh, so uh, am I. Are you really? I was just telling my husband, like, I really need to meet because I'm new. To, I actually, okay, I used to bag, I'm sorry to digress, but I used to, okay, I used to bag on Star Wars, and I am so sorry. Huh? Please forgive me. Forgive me, because what happened is my mom made me watch it when I was like eight years old, and I did not get it. 
And I fell asleep and I was like, this is boring. And why'd you make me watch this? And at the time I was like really into like super girly stuff. So just this last, just this last year, I started watching Star Wars because I went to Disney World and we went on the Rise of the Resistance ride. No way. And it was the best ride on the planet. Like uh, I can't, and I was like, okay, I got to discover Star Wars. Now I am like obsessed. My husband's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, yep, you, you, mar- you married a Star Wars fan, came out 11 years later, but like I am obsessed. I don't like the, the final three though that just came out. I like the original. Yeah, and we're going to get along. We're going to get along. Yeah. Soon. But I mean, I can. Li- I don't like watching things over and over again. I can watch that movie, those movies, over and over and over again. Like <laughs> that's when my wife. That's when my wife got me to marry her. She was yeah. saying, you know, we can we can watch Star Wars, whatever, and you know she, she hadn't seen them. We can watch them all. I said, can you marry me now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why are we mess? Why are we messing around? I know I just met you last week, but why are we messing around? Have you guys gone to the to the uh, Star Wars? Uh, Galaxy's no. Edge there yet? No, I'm not. I'm not. I love it. It literally turned me into Star Wars fan. I was like, I cannot come back here and not know what this stuff is. Like, this was it just blew my mind. Like, <laughs> when that inspired me to do a video, I'm gonna talk talk about how the storyboard team at Disney, how they basically all the stuff we're talking about here about cancel culture, they did the same thing within the Star Wars studio. It's, it's really funny how in fighting whatever you have Favreau and you had these people doing this and Kathleen Kennedy. And it's all stuff we're talking about right now, but just within this little microcosm of Star Wars. And yeah. it's, it's, it's just a paradigm of, of society. And it's just interesting to, 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 to talk about. So yeah, uh, the patriarchy, Luke Skywalker, you know, the scumbag. Yeah. Um, and so all that plays into it. But um, We can but, do a whole podcast on that. <laughs> you know what? We'd probably, have, we'd probably be much more successful than Star Wars than we would. Yeah. <laughs> um, but do it in such a conservative type way, I think it would it may, may have actually played. Because right now, a lot of people in the media space, like Nerd Roddick and like Geeks and Gamers, those guys on YouTube, they are making a killing. That that Star Wars chick, she got a huge channel, um, just because of what's going on within the whole Star Wars um, universe. You know? Yeah. So uh, just they're, they're they're liberals, but they're pissed off because you're screwing my you're screwing my thing up. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. It's funny that I don't even understand why anyone who's a Star Wars fan would be on the left because it's such a message of like tyranny in there and like control and who's doing that right now? It's well, the they're, they're more classical they're liberals, right? They're more, they're more classical type liberals. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know. Yeah. But what, what I want to talk to you about here is, is, is China, okay? Yeah. And uh, what, if we're not too careful, if we're not careful, we can end up like what China is right now. And this is really a sad thing. This is a yeah. podcast I listened to on uh, if this channel was um, um, – Midnight's Edge, I believe. And it was an insider who was a Hollywood insider, and he said, what's going on with, with, the, with, with China and uh, the storytelling is that the people in China love Star Wars, the old Star Wars, not the new Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Because, and this is sad, this is, I, I get emotional thinking about this, is that when they see someone self-sacrifice themselves for someone they don't know, be a true hero moment, they crave that. Mm-hmm. China... They don't have that philosophy that if, if you're on the street bleeding, oh well, because they've yeah. been because if they if they help you, they could get in trouble. If they yeah. if, if they do something out of line, they're in trouble. If they get out of your silo, they get in trouble. So they gravitate to Star Wars because it's the hero story, right? Absolutely. And uh, and, and and he's a self sacrificing whatever. They, they ate it up, and that's why they didn't embrace the last three because they didn't have that as much. Mm-hmm. It's, it was just a, I mean it was such a sad heart wrenching thing. If we don't if we aren't careful. We're going to end up like that, too, in 20, yeah. 20 years. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen real quick. I mean, it's interesting because on Instagram, there's a lot of these young kids who are super into communism, you know, and they come onto my my stuff and they just start because I, oh, oh, I had. So what happened was I did a post on Bernie Sanders and I hashtagged Bernie Sanders, right? <laughs> and and yeah. I had these leftists come onto my feed and like, Go, you cannot use that hashtag, blah, blah, blah. So now I hashtag Bernie Sanders, hashtag AOC, every post. And I, I, I took your I took your tags and used them. And I'm getting the same thing. Oh, you know I, what? And it's I, funny. Stole your, I stole your tags, really. Oh, you good. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and what's crazy is that they, they come onto my feed and they're like, you do not know what communism is. Right. You do not know what Marxism is. You don't know the true stuff, right? Because we're talking a lot about critical race theory right now. Okay. You know? And there, and it is, it is rooted in Marxism to divide people into two categories: the oppressed and the oppressor, the worker and the um, capitalist. Right? 
That's communist. Uh, the Communist Manifesto has had two categories. That's what critical race theory is doing: is the oppressor and the oppressed. And even the people that wrote the theory in the '80s and the '70s or whatever, they were Marxists. Like they were into Marxism. And and so I have these like kids coming onto my feed, going like, "You don't know true Marxism. You don't know true communism." I'm just like, "Why are you guys even into this? Where did that even come from? Like, what has our school system done?" that there are kids that think that communism is something that should come to America, you know? That's one thing my mother and I talked about and she thought that we would never get to that point. This is before Trump, um, uh, the election was over. And I'm like, mom, I'm telling you, cause she was, she's a, she's a big Democrat, of course. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, she was like, we'll never be a socialist country. I said, mom, you know, I'm not, I'm in this all the time. I see it coming. And this is like um, eight months ago. Yeah. And I haven't really spoken with her much because I don't want to, bring up conversations because that's going to I mean, lead us to, you know, we don't argue, but still, I mean, I just want to be even keel, but it's also yeah. hard not to say something nowadays, but anything, because everything we see on commercials, whatever, I, I almost have to say something. And if I do that, yeah. it's going to be a problem. Well, it's coming to our lives. That's what happened this last year is that, and I think that's part of the reason why the right is waking up now is that it's affecting our lives more. Yes. I mean, you see, we're living in two different Americas now, red states versus blue states. You know, we never seen such a contrast in the states. I got, I went from California to Florida, and it's completely different world over here. Like, I I feel like I'm in a whole other country, you know. So it's really a it's really starting to affect our back door, like the way that you vote or the way where you live. If it's controlled by the Democrats, you you are going to feel it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you can't just live in your own little bubble anymore. And so I think that's that's really what's happening right now. And that's part of the reason why it's really hard to get along with people that are on the left because it's so in our, what do you, are you going to, do you want me to wear a mask? Are you going to ask me if I'm vaccinated? Are you going to, you know, like I, right. there's just, right. are you, are you going to um, see if I support Black Lives Matter? You know, right. are you going to treat me differently because I'm black, you know, which I'm getting a lot now, which is really annoying. Like I got a gift from my job as a teacher for being black. And it was you know like an insulting gift ever. And it's like, I don't want to be treated like that. Like I never signed up for being treated as the token black person, you right. know, no, thank you. I, I reject that, but I can't reject it, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, you're right. I think uh, a lot of Christians, particularly Christians and uh, Americans in general who were just didn't want to have anything to do with this stuff, yeah. pushed it off and said, just say, well, it's not a big deal. They just come here. No, they just come a little further. No, just come a little further. further. Exactly. And now, they're, and now they're in your face. And now it's like, oh. Shut down. They shut down the churches and kept the strip clubs open. That's where I was like. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny, but I mean. Yeah, it happened in California. The churches were shut down, but the strip clubs were allowed to be open. I was like, something's going on here. Like, <laughs> and, and what what really got me was you can't sing. And if you're you know if you're oh, studying Bible law, praising God on, via the voice is one of the most powerful things you can do as a, as a absolutely. Believer. And to not sing, and I I, I get the. the if everything was true, I'm gonna. Yes. I'm not. I can't say too much on YouTube, but yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I kind of gave them that a little bit. But I, deep down, I'm like, that's Especially not really towards the beginning. That's mm-hmm. not really what. That's not really what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. It's it's more. It's more. It's more. Well, uh, what, when when, when there was thousands and thousands of people protesting on the streets last year, and there was nurses saying, you know what, the protest is more important than COVID spread. And I was like, wait a second. Mm-hmm. I was like you guys were just saying we all need to be trapped in our homes and not be around anyone. And now there's mobs of people on the streets for weeks. And you guys are just saying, Oh, nothing. They never, there was not even a single headline about how that would spread COVID. Not a single one. No, not zero one. We, we, wait a second here. Like I thought we were in a pandemic, you know? And so it just, it's it, it, at that moment I was like, all right, guys, I'm done playing the game. You know, I'm done playing the game. If you, it, 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 and it's just really showing up in our backyard, and we can't we can't be silent anymore. We have to stand up for our rights as Americans. Well, I'm gonna say something a little encouraging here. And by the way, yeah. everything you just said there was amazing. I 100 percent agree with you, especially the, the point about the, um, the outside, <laughs> the hypocrisy of being able to protest but not not to share um, uh, a hymn yeah. in a local church eight feet away yeah. from your neighbor. <sighs> uh, anyway, um, but what's encouraging is, and I all, I, I can be now. I created a channel on my um, website where I put a video out there about the <clears throat> things I can't talk about. So 
if I talk about polling or elections, you know what I'm talking about in terms of yeah. what the Democrats do to win. <laughs> that being that being said, right now the climate in this country is that the Democrats can't win anything outside of that one other thing. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they, if you look at any poll right now, just just think in your mind, 70, 30. Look at the polling, and you'll always see somewhere around 30 percent agree with that wacko, crazy left crap. Mm-hmm. Most of the country is either in the middle or to the right of that, and they can't win an election, period. So I'm telling you right now, something's going to go down between now and 2022. I don't know what it's going to be, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, but what's encouraging is is the landscape, politically speaking, is good for us. We just have to capitalize on what's there in front of us and yes. make sure that we tell our legislators, our Congress people to have some courage, you know. Um, and I see the Supreme Court, even though they haven't really been doing a lot of good things. They've been doing some small things that have really been beneficial to us um, here here and there, here and there, not not mm-hmm. overwhelmingly, but just enough that, uh, that I think we can see a, a big change. I can see us taking the House and the Senate in, in, in two years from now or a year and a half from now. So, uh, But we need to capitalize on that now on all levels. And yeah. So hopefully, you know, and school choice, and by the way, school choice is one and the Second Amendment is another. Yes. Because all this crime Gun rates are through the roof, and black yes. people want to get guns now and want to get educated and trained on guns. And yes. guess what? Once black people get guns legally and want to do them responsibly with their family, guess what? They don't want their guns taken from them either. No. Yeah, exactly. So guess who they're going to vote for now? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So all of that plays into us because conservatism in, in general is just common sense. And because Trump pushed them so far to the left, we yeah. have the entire country at our disposal in terms of a voting bar. But That's we're getting really really yeah. gaslit, left yeah. and right. And like you said, they're making us they're making us feel like idiots by telling us what we don't see. Um, you know, it's raining, but you know they're doing something else on us. So. Yeah, yeah. They and you know what? There is a lot of hope. Like I said, I'm I'm a, I'm with the young people every day. You know, I see I see that if I you know I I I I'm not allowed to share a lot with my students, but I do share with them the danger of communism, and I always have them study the North North Korea every year. We do a North Korea project. And I have them study what it's like there, um, what life is like there. I, I, I teach them about communism. I have them all give me their phones. And I, I put them all on a desk because high schoolers always have phones. And I say, all right, so some of you have like the, the newest iPhone. You have like the iPhone 12 or I think it's 12 now, right? 11. Yeah, 12, yeah, yeah. 12, yeah. You have the iPhone 12 and some of you have the iPhone 5, right? Now, those of you that have the iPhone 12, you need to give the kid that doesn't have a phone, you need to let him use it, right? <laughs> and, and you need to let him use it 70% of the time. And I tell him, this is what socialism is like. I teach him socialism and communism. Socialism is when the people that have the nicest stuff or the most money, they have to give 70% of their income. That's usually around what it is with socialism in socialist countries. And, um, and But then in communism, I'm like, I get your iPhone 12, and then I have this old flip phone. And I'm like, you guys all get this government issued flip phone <laughs> <laughs> for free. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm like, and I, I pass it around the room. You guys don't have to pay for it. It's absolutely 100% free. The government will provide it for you. You will, you know, you will get this nice phone from the government while I have the iPhone 12, right? Because that's what always happens in communist countries. The people in power, they always get the nicest stuff. And then they give scraps to the people, but it's all equal, right? Wow, and, dude. You know what, man? <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> but, That's uh, probably the best analogy I've, I've ever heard. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. And my students, they get it. They're like, oh, yeah, we don't want communism. Because I'm like, and I'm like, in, in capitalism, every single one of you can have an iPhone 12. But guess what you have to do for it? You have to work for it. Like, you got you got you can go get a job and you can man, get an iPhone 12. We're going, like, we're going, hey, we're going to church, man. We're going to church here, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just hey, take the show. Go. <laughs> just, hey, just go ahead. It's common sense, you know. <laughs> Wait, where'd you go? Hey, <laughs> I'm I'm done. I'm done. You you, you run with it, man. I, yeah. I am I am not needed here. That was that's amazing. But that's the kind of lessons my students don't get. I have students that whenever I do the North Korea project, yes. I always have a kid that raises their hands and go. I had a teacher tell me North Korea is great. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Yeah, like, Kim Jong-un, you will. Yeah. 
but that's where we're headed, you know, with the media and with all the like control that's happening right now. It's, it's, you know, you can't speak against Biden. There's all this, like, if you say anything, like if you give one of the Biden quotes where he's being a total racist, you'll right. get a missing context thing on it. Like, of course. He didn't mean that. He didn't mean oh, black women were, were stocking the grocery shelves so he could stay home. Like, well, what does what did he mean? Like, <laughs> black. Like, yeah. And if and if and if it, if it isn't true, if if it is true, then the missing context would be a totally different article altogether. Yeah, exactly. It's like I said, um, dogs don't like cats, and then they'll say, and then you'll say missing context, and they'll say, well, dogs don't like whales. Yeah, that's not what I said. I yeah, said dogs don't like cats. <laughs> it's really bad. It's really so, bad. And when he said Antifa is just an idea, there was a missing context thing on that. I was like, well, dude, like this guy just gets protected left and right, you know? And that's really creepy to me that people don't get, people don't know the truth, you know, on him. I mean, the guy, he literally lied about marching with civil rights. That should be enough to cancel someone left and right. He said, when I marched with the civil rights movement, this was in the eighties when he was running for president because he ran right. for president. And it's like, you guys are going to vote for the guy that lied about marching for in the civil rights movement. <laughs> I'm like, that's that's a whole new low. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it's like, uh, and then we'll get on, um, bad on, um, I guess that show Boondocks when the, when the when the guy lied about marching with King. I don't know if you saw the episode or not. Um, they called him a sellout, but that's what Biden did. You know, yeah. You know, using using the struggle of a of a of a, of a movement, and that's what that's what BLM's doing essentially. Yeah. You know, they're they're using the pain and suffering of a generation to benefit themselves mm -hmm. and their pockets. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know they're co-opting the movement, and they've been doing that for you know for decades. Not yeah. in that form, of course, but in other forms. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you this question. I know I know we've been doing this for about an hour and a half here, or an hour and some minutes. Um, I'm curious about your your, your students. You're you're a teacher. Uh, what do your students think about you? And what, what or better yet, what do your students? How I kind of phrase this? What reward do you get from your students from the time you begin a year, end the year, or after they've left your class, you see them down the street, whatever, uh, from what they've told you and what you feedback from them? What's your favorite part of that? Uh, I teach the English learners. I teach the English learners and the low readers. So I teach them some of the most difficult kids to teach on campus. So the kids that are coming in and learning English, which is very hard. <laughs> English is not an easy language to learn. And then I also teach the kids that are behind in reading. And... Um, I have high schoolers that have never had someone sit down and read with them one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what I do with my students. I sit down and read with them one-on-one -on -one and I catch, and I, I seriously feel like the gift of reading and literacy, like when I have a boy who comes in and he's reading, at, it's mainly all boys, sadly, because there's a crisis with our boys, who's reading at a first grade level and then he leaves my class in one year, gets caught up in reading at an eighth or a seventh or eighth grade level and literate now, I feel like I've given him a gift, like, because that's how I, I, that's how reading and researching and figuring things out on my own is like been my life, like how I've, I am who I am right now, reading the Bible, you know, uh, reading about what happened with the Democrat, the history of the Democrats, because you don't get this stuff in school, right? Yeah. Um, no. And being able to understand like big words, you know? <laughs> Yeah. And so that has been the biggest reward for me is knowing that I'm leaving my, I am, my students are literate when they leave my class. So that at least if they ever go, you know, if they do start getting brainwashed or if they are being brainwashed, they can always get out of it. If they just start reading, they just start researching, you know, remember when being, being the beast, the animated version to 91, when uh, Stefan says, you're reading, you're, you start to thinking, and you know, <laughs> it's like getting ideas. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, one, of the, one of the biggest crimes you could have with a slave would teach, teach the slave how to read. Yeah. You know, it's so yeah. important. It is, absolutely. Wow. So, wow. So, okay, uh, I ask this question to people uh, uh, almost every single time, and, and the question really is this, if you had whatever you, if you, someone just said, look, um, we're gonna give you the power to do anything you want, It'll take, it'll take effect, people will fall in line, and you have three things you can put forth. What would those three things be that would uh, improve the world or our society? Man. It, can be, it, can, it can be spiritual too if you want. Yeah. I mean, I immediately thought of Jesus. You know, just Jesus. Like, I wish that people would believe, like, that we could present, that people can see Jesus, can get to know him, and I mean, I... 
I, my story and that, that you heard my walk away story, but my full story, I'm a two time sexual assault survivor. I was addicted to crystal meth when I was 19. My dad left me when my mom was pregnant. Um, lots of abuse as a child, like told that I was stupid in ninth grade and put in a, put in a um, class that was for kids that have learning disabilities. Um, dropped out of college twice. <laughs> like, uh, just, just a lot of stuff, been through a lot of stuff. And I, but my relationship with God and like my best friend, Jesus has, is I'm here right now, like surviving, thriving. Oh, also was, I've also lost 70 pounds. <laughs> like I was a big girl in high school, really big. But so just, um, if I could change one thing in this world is that to, to, to see more of him, you know, like, I feel like he's here. He wants, he wants us, but we have just been shutting him out. Right. So that's number one. I feel like that would solve everything else. I feel like we don't need anything else. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that would be. That would be <laughs> but I mean, if okay, hypothetically, if <laughs> yeah, that would be. He just wasn't one of them. I, you know, honestly, I just really want fathers to come back in the homes. Mm -hmm. I want families to be whole again, because I think it, it, I mean, it would just be it would be a completely different society right now. I see so many kids that just need their dads. You know, my specialty has always been because I teach the low readers. And like I said, there's, there's um, women are outperforming men right now in, in high school and in college. The college entrance rate for women is 60 percent versus 40 percent for men right now with the, this new generation. Wow. And um, and it's it's a lack of guidance. Our boys are so lost. And then also the attack on the left on masculinity. You can't say be a man to a young man. They don't even know what a man is like. They're just like it's 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 just been whitewashed and watered down and we don't even know like what a strong protective man is like a lot of these kids because they never had it in their lives yeah. so bringing fathers back making making families whole again that is just something that and i think it would just solve a lot and i think people ought to be a lot more happier you know if they just were content in being married and with their family and and then number four i mean number three is drugs I just wish that there was no such thing as drugs. <laughs> Cause I think that really messes people up too. And a lot of times people are really, you know, you may meet someone and you're like, who, what's wrong with that person? And then you're like, they're an alcoholic or they're smoking weed every day or they're, and that's really what's wrong with them is that they're on some sort of substance. So their mind isn't clear, you know? Yeah. So. I, yeah. I, I bet you've met some really, really good people that just because of that, that, that vice, they just can't, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I was one of them. I was one of them. I was, I used to have, well, I did the meth thing. I was addicted to personal meth, but then I got really into alcohol. I used to have big jugs of alcohol in my trunk and I was always driving drunk and just like out there. And when I sobered up, that's when I found me. That's when I was like, oh wow, here's this like powerful, like strong woman that can like get a master in education with a 4.0. Wow. Yeah. Sobered up. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> wow amazing grace right yeah absolutely you're a yeah. great interviewer man this has been fun you well, well, I, 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 <laughs> I said you're the homie <laughs> dude i mean i i if we're, we're being recorded so i really can't be that, that, that candid but yeah. um i don't want to make the mistake and not edit it and keep it in yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's like did you just say that yeah. um but i mean i'm it seems to me you have you're like the perfect person, right, for for today. And I'm not trying. I'm not trying to blow smoke up your, you know, uh, you know, pander to you. But if you think about it, you, you mentioned about weight loss, okay? You mentioned about you know the addiction. You mentioned about, of course, black, of course, you female, um, the teacher, and 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 just the accomplishment. There is no demographic that you have not touched in terms of <laughs> helping somebody in it's this country. All it's all God and yes, yeah, exactly, I mean, yeah, exactly. I haven't realized that because I used to, you know, I also struggled with major self hate and depression, like my whole, and it's still something I struggle with because that's the devil. That's totally the devil. Like, and that's why they're attacking. I mean, cut you off. I'm sorry. Yeah, go that's ahead. Why, that's what I'm sorry. I say this. That's yeah. why they are on you, like the way they are. Absolutely. No, Absolutely. and that's why they, that's that's exactly that. Now, now I know why. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, continue your thought. But I, I have thank to you, though. And you know what? It's so amazing about God because I will get waves of hate. It's crazy because and people come on my feet like, "Dang, girl, you get a lot of hate." 
And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, I know. <laughs> they're like, I wish I could get as much hate as you. <laughs> I should share my screen here. I'm gonna just look at something real quickly. Um, I may cut this out, but I'm gonna see. Well, I won't. Well, maybe I can. But would you keep yeah. talking? If I can do it. Yeah. So, um, so, um, but every time I get like a super wave of hate, so God will send a messenger of someone just saying, "Hey, I just want you to know, like, what you're doing is great." Like you are encouraging me. I see all the hate you're getting. I've had young people. I have, I've had young people who are on the left say the way you are being treated right now is making me rethink my position of being on the left. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Cause it's like, I, yeah. I had no idea people act like this on the left and I'm like, they do. And it's all the time. And it's, it's very demonic actually. You know, I took your, um, your, one of your recent, uh, posts and I re, um, it was one about racism. We defined racism. Yeah. Point yeah. one, point two. Yeah. And some guy, some socialist guy from England somewhere came out there and said, that's not racism. That's not a bad definition, whatever, whatever. So then I said, well, obviously you didn't see her comments in there dealing with white, white leftists. Because you went yeah. on for like, you went on for like, you know, a few, few yeah. paragraphs. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. did you see what, she, why are you deflecting the core message of what she's saying? Um, and uh to me, that was just powerful because he didn't have he didn't have an answer to that. You know, mm -hmm. um, they pick something that they don't like and they attack it almost like a straw man. Um, mm -hmm. And I said, racism is really subjective to begin with because there is no scientific definition for race to begin with. Yeah, and so yeah. defining it is really subjective. I have a Especially definition. Especially someone who's mixed like me, they hate that name, conservative mixed girl. They hate. Yeah. They hate. It's amazing how much hate you get for being mixed. And I'm just like, what? Like, yeah. You mean like uh, Obama, you mean? If you should say. Huh? Say it again? You should say like, like Obama, you mean? You're, you're, yeah. you're Messiah? Yeah. <laughs> that's not a problem, that's not a problem there. Well, he's not mixed. He's His mom was black. <laughs> that's not, but, you know, that's the kind of stuff that she wasn't. She was white. But, you know, they, they, they'll they say stuff like that. Like, okay. <laughs> We're all mixed, really. Exactly. And I don't know if you watch uh, Ken Ham or any of the stuff that he does on race, whatever, dealing with the whole thing with that. Uh, we're all the same. We're all the same uh, race, but we're different colors. Uh, yes. Different, uh, yes. Different, uh, shades of brown. Yes. And, and I was telling my wife yesterday. I said, you know what? I didn't realize what the brown thing was about. So why did God choose brown as a color for skin? And some mm -hmm. guy, um, Patrick Hampton, mentioned, well, it came. We came from the dirt. Mm. I was like, ah, isn't that just like God to do that? Yeah. It, I mean, dirt's brown. So yeah. that, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it makes sense. Um, and so it's just. Yeah, he's just amazing. There's nothing that he does that is um, minor. It's it's yeah. always it's it's always perfect, right? There's mm -hmm. even there's nothing out of place when it comes to God. There's nothing. He's like so. Um, anyway, and that's one thing we're missing now. The last thing I'll say is this. Uh, let's we'll talk more, but yeah. is the whole George Floyd thing really put the church and and at odds with each other? Because mm -hmm. for a long time it was like you know white people were kind of like ignoring the whole issue. And so George Floyd kind of put that square in the middle of the congregation. And then you had to make a decision, all but like a litmus test of whether or not you're racist or not. Yeah. And, and so that split a lot of people up. And I think right now what it comes down to is, is my point, my point is this, is that it's a spiritual issue now. We can no longer deal with stuff on a political basis anymore. Yep. We have to deal with it from a human um, worldview issue and from a spiritual basis, pr preferably, Bible, because that mm -hmm. to me is is the only way that has truth really all, yeah. all throughout. And so, if you don't have that kind of foundation in terms of your arguments, then you're always going to lose in the climate we're in right now. Yep. Yep. So you're right on. <laughs> but um, I, I really enjoyed this. I uh, hope you did. Yeah, me too. And I I want you to come out here so we can ride Rise of Resistance together. That's you got to promise me that. <laughs> <laughs> the the Star Wars ride. Well, I'm not I'm not far away. I think my wife would not want to wear a mask. Are, are there still restrictions on there? There's, in no, there's no mask at Disney World right now. That's why you should do it now. Hold on, let me plug in my my computer's about to die. Okay, Kylie. So I uh, thank you so much for this discussion. I really enjoyed it. I hope you did um, too. Did you enjoy it? Oh yeah. Uh, good because uh, I think this is a really important discussion. And people in the audience, uh, make sure you follow Kylie on all of our platforms and make sure you show her some support and some love. And uh, on that end, Kylie, can you tell everyone how they can follow you, support you? Sure. Yeah, I'm conservative mixed girl on Instagram. Same name on YouTube. 
but I'm Kali Ites on Facebook. So K-A-L-I-I-T-E-S on Facebook. And also I'm going to be, um, I just wrote a children's book and it's amazing. And I have an Ill a wonderful illustrator and it's going to be a book for every single kid in America. <laughs> and it's going to share such a good message about America. It's going to be an allegorical story. Basically it's a farm, but it's supposed to represent America. And oh, wow. all the things that are happening and the attacks that are happening is going to be done in this farm, but meaning, but it's actually America. So it's an allegorical story for kids. It should be fun for you to read because it's actually really funny, but it's also um, got some great lessons in it. So I'll let you guys know when that comes out. When it comes out, we will have either I'll be on your channel or you come back on our yeah, or both. Sounds good. And uh, yeah, maybe get some other people on as well and promote the heck out of it. And mm -hmm. uh, I'll be buying as many copies as I can afford. <laughs> and, uh, so um, I will, and um, so awesome. I'll definitely be plugging it. So thank um, you. I'm looking forward to that coming. Yeah. Out, so. uh, is there anything else you want to say to the uh, to my listeners or your own listeners? I'm sure they're gonna be watching this too. I just, you know, just God bless you guys. Like we just got to stay strong. It's this has been a crazy year and a half, and it's not gonna get easier. And so just take care of yourself. You can take care of your family. You know, say your prayers every day because. We can't survive this without God <laughs> and without each other. You know, I, I like, I feel like I have a brother now today, just after this conversation with you. And, um, we really just have to stick together. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've also <lost laughs> many friends going on. So I take, I take, I, yeah. Any, 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 I don't have anyone to talk to anymore. Hardly. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, um, it's just, it's just sad. So, yeah. But, um, I thank you so much for that. And yeah, uh, God bless you guys. So, um, we'll, we'll definitely I'll talk again. And All for right. everyone on this channel, um, again, I just got to thank uh, Ms. Kali here. And uh, if you like me doing this channel, if you like more of this stuff like this, then comment, like, subscribe. And uh, as always, um, you can check out some content we have for you right now.